Uh, thank you. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, this uh, very nice conference and giving me the opportunity to uh, present a bit uh, my subject. So what I want to talk about uh, today is the stochastic description of noisy open quantum system. So since it's a relatively uh, short talk, uh, I won't go into uh, presenting the details of a specific model, but rather I will try to convey some general ideas about uh, some uh, general framework that can be applied in many um, uh, different situations and that has been a bit uh, overlooked in my opinion and I think uh, maybe uh, 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 of uh, interest sometime. So um, let me start by setting a bit uh, the general background of what I want to talk about. So uh, this is the general picture that you can have in mind. You have a quantum system uh, in contact with some kind of environment and there is an interaction between them. And in general, uh, you will assume that the environment's the number of degrees of freedom is very large compared to the system. And uh, in full generality, this is a very uh, difficult problem. So for instance, uh, it is uh, illustrated, if you take the condo problem, uh, the, uh, it's a single body, uh, uh, the system is just a single body uh, quantum uh, system, so it's very simple, um, but it's uh, put into interaction with an environment and uh, the interaction makes it an effectively a many body uh, uh, interacting problem to solve. And uh, those who have worked on the condo problem knows that this is by all means not a trivial problem. So uh, you want to uh, have uh, some kind of simplifying approximation that will allow you uh, to go further and uh, very uh, useful simplifying hypothesis that you have uh, in a lot of cases is that you assume the Markov property. So the Markov property uh, states that uh, the properties of the system at a given, uh, at a later uh, time uh, T prime uh, only depends on the uh, state of the system at this given time T prime, meaning that there is no uh, memory effects uh, in uh, the, environment uh, system uh, in, uh, interaction. Another way to state that is that the typical uh, speed of relaxation of correlation function in the environment is much faster than those uh, typical time scales you are interested for the dynamics of the system. So there is a very nice uh, general formulation of uh, this kind uh, of uh, uh, this kind of uh, evolution and it's given by the GKSL equation uh, going equals uh, GK SL standing for Gorini, Kosakovsky, Sudarshan, and Lindblad, and uh, sometimes only abbrevi abbreviated Lindblad equation. And it's um, a general way of describing a uh, quantum map uh, such that it fulfills these three properties. So uh, complete positivity, uh, which is slightly general, more general than positivity, but I uh, won't enter into these details, which is trust preserving for your density matrix and has this Markov property. So if you, if you have all these uh, three things, uh, you have uh, what is uh, called a quantum channel, uh, which is some kind of generalization, if you want, to the, of the unitary operation that's described by the Schrodinger equation to uh, more just general uh, uh, quantum operation that you can make. So for instance, quantum channel, they include uh, measurement, projective measurement, uh, which is a valid uh, quantum uh, operation. Um, so what is nice is that you have also a, a very generic way of writing the generator of such a map. Uh, so by generator, I mean that the, uh, by taking the exponential map of L uh, with a time variable uh, and applying it to, to rho, I will generate my quantum channel. And this L operator is what is called the, the Lindblad operator uh, in, the, in most cases. And it's given in general by um, and, uh, this guy, so here you recognize uh, the part that you will get if you had only a unitary evolution. And here uh, is, uh, if you want, uh, the new part, uh, which um, gives you uh, the non-hermeticity uh, non of the system, because this part, this added part can make the spectrum of this covidian uh, have complex uh, eigenvalues. Uh, so all of this uh, probably uh, most of you uh, know well. And uh, what I want to, to emphasize now is that there is a way of lifting uh, this uh, kind of Lindblad equation in a very general manner that I will describe now. So this relies on the Steinspring's theorem. So that 
uh, states that it's actually always possible to enlarge your quantum space enough such that phi can be seen as a reduced unitary revolution. So this means that in general, you can always write a given quantum channel the following way as a unitary revolution on your quantum system while you, uh, where you have taken the tensor product to a larger space, which is your environment. And then you take the partial trace over the environment. Uh, sorry, so this is, should be an E, uh, not a B. So the tra tra partial trace here is taken on the same space as row E. And uh, what uh, uh, will be the spirit of uh, the, uh, the following of my talk uh, is that this uh, larger uh, space uh, contains the degrees of freedom that I want to associate to some kind of uh, stochastic process. So I will make this clear uh, in the following. So here is the picture that you can have in mind is that uh, the, um, this unitary will be a stochastic unitary with respect to this uh, noisy degrees of freedom. And by averaging them, so by taking the partial trace, which will be my averaging operation over the degrees of freedom of the noise, what I will get is the quantum channel. And at the level of generator, this will nicely uh, uh, also apply. So meaning that uh, I can get the Lindblad evolution from an average stochastic Hamiltonian. So this will be unitary stochastic, and by averaging, I will get a uh, Lindblad generator. So just uh, to clarify a bit uh, the, the picture, so I think it's useful to make an analogy with the situation in classical physics where you have a, you can take the celebrated example of the Brownian motion. So you have a particle here, and it's contact in some kind of environment that is uh, represented by the small dots here. And there is uh, uh, Markovian assumptions for the interaction uh, between the particle and the environment, and uh, meaning that the displacement, uh, the random force that is applied uh, at the, on the particle at some given time doesn't depend on its past trajectory. And this is described as uh, you know well by the Langevin equation, which I write down here. So you have that the increment of the velocity is given uh, by this damping term that is deterministic plus a stochastic term uh, here that is dBT. And what I call dBT is the Brownian increment, uh, meaning that dBT over dt, if you want, you can think uh, about that as uh, white noise. So this is the stochastic version of the equation. And uh, here I work in the Ito convention. So if I take the average of this equation, what I will get is the following dumping equation. Uh, so I just got rid of the dBT term. And now this is a deterministic equation for the average of the velocity. And you see that it will uh, be dumped towards uh, the null velocity. So uh, quantum mechanically, we have an analogy where uh, I have my system that is in contact with uh, this uh, environment that I told uh, you earlier. And the effective description of the system can be made in a stochastic way. Uh, so for now, it's a, uh, abstract writing like this, where the evolution of the uh, wave function is given by stochastic uh, incre uh, increment here, uh, which is, uh, so this is a stochastic unitary and DSG is also a stochastic Hamiltonian, okay? Uh, so this is analogous to the Langevin equation uh, written at the stochastic level here. And uh, by performing the average, uh, what you get is uh, a Lindblad equation. Uh, so this is uh, somehow, uh, the analog of the dumping equation on the left here. And uh, the claim of, of the science peak theorem is that you can always also uh, go the other way around, meaning that you can, for any given Lindblad equation uh, that you are given, you can lift this equation uh, to a stochastic uh, Hamiltonian description. Um, so I just want to make a quick disclaimer. Uh, so what I'm talking about, uh, uh, there are actually uh, similarities uh, with uh, the weak measurement uh, uh, procedure that some of you uh, may know, uh, but uh, this is not the, this is not the same thing. Um, but uh, if you want to discuss the analogies, uh, of course, uh, you can do that after. So why should you care about this picture? So first of all, it's always useful to have a different point of view on the problem and having a way of seeing your Lindblad evolution as a unitary evolution is useful because uh, 
well, the unitary version is more mathematically restricted uh, structure. And uh, as such, you can uh, extract uh, more, uh, you can extract more conditions from it. Uh, second point is that there is a rich physics uh, beyond the mean. So the Lindblad uh, uh, equation only allows you to access to the mean behavior of your systems, while this uh, stochastic uh, unitary gives you uh, all the fluctuation if you want. So this is a mean of studying a stochastic process, uh, but in the Hilbert space. So the study of a stochastic process has, uh, uh, has had a lot of success in the in uh, classical physics traditionally. Uh, and on, when you're working uh, on classical physics, you have uh, you're working in the classical configuration space. And here, instead of the classical configuration space, you have a Hilbert space. So. Uh, there are a lot of questions that you can uh, translate to uh, the quantum case. So for instance, uh, do you have a fluctuation dissipation theorem, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so just to make uh, all of this a bit more concrete, I just want to uh, show a, a simple uh, toy model uh, illustration of this idea. So um, a lot of you may know well the spin boson uh, system uh, uh, introduced by Calder and Leggett. Uh, so the, which I present here in a cartoon picture. So you have a system, it's simply a spin one half. And then it's an interaction with a given bath, which is made of collect infinite collection of harmonic oscillators at different frequencies. And you assume that all these harmonic oscillators are decoupled from one another. And uh, here for simplicity, I will assume that the internal dynamics of the system uh, is zero. So the system on its own doesn't uh, have an internal dynamics. And there is some kind of coupling uh, between the system and the bath such that uh, you can do a spin flip of the system by creating excitations uh, of uh, uh, the harmonic oscillators of the bath. So here you see you can create an excitation and do a spin flip uh, to the down pointing spin, and here it's the other way around. Um, and then uh, upon certain assumptions that I won't go through, uh, um, uh, but you can ask me later if you want to know the de details. Uh, what you will get uh, is that you can enforce the Markov hypothesis uh, on the system and then get the effective uh, dynamics uh, on the system written in this way, where now the degrees of freedom of the bath are entirely encoded into these two quantities that I call dWt and dW bar of t. And what are they? Uh, so they are very simple objects uh, from the stochastic process point of view. They are just, uh, DW is just the increment of a complex Brownian motion. So uh, by complex Brownian motion, I mean that DW is the sum of uh, uh, two uh, uh, real Brownian motion uh, with uh, I imaginary number i here. So dBT1, dBT2 are just two real uh, Brownian motion. Uh, with a, which are independent of each other. And DW bar is the complex conjugate of this complex Brownian motion. And sigma plus and sigma minus are just the uh, uh, spin flip uh, operators. So it's very simple. So you see what happens is that uh, you are now make spin flip uh, on the system, but with an amplitude that is random and that is complex. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is the stochastic description. So what happens when you average uh, this thing is that you're going to get an effective uh, description uh, in terms of uh, Lindblad operator. Uh, so this is what I write here. So if you take this uh, stochastic evolution and then you average over uh, this, uh, uh, these noises, what you get is this following uh, evolution for the density matrix. And uh, uh, so this is just uh, the two Lindblads, uh, one which injects, uh, uh, which do spin flip uh, from minus to plus, and the other one who do this uh, inverse uh, spin flip. And uh, if you start from a given uh, initial state that is pure, and uh, so here I represent it on the block sphere, and it's pointing at the, at the, at the periphery, uh, then what you get for the, uh, for the stationary states after an infinitely uh, uh, long time evolution, uh, 
is just a decohere state uh, towards the centers of the blob sphere. So it's just proportional to identity here. And this is what you expect, right? Because when you put a, a quantum system in contact with an environment, typically you expect a decoherence um, phenomena to occur. Uh, so this is what this equation describes. Now, if you look at things at the stochastic level, uh, the picture is very different. So what you get uh, actually is that the uh, uh, vector of your block sphere never shrinks uh, toward the center of the ball because the uh, evolution is unitary at every time, meaning that you preserve the norm of the wave function. And uh, you can show that actually what happened is an ergodic random walk uh, on the block sphere, meaning that uh, over the course of time, uh, all of the elements of the surface are visited with the same probability uh, over time. So uh, I think this is a cute model because uh, it gives you, you have a very simple picture of uh, uh, the uh, coupling with the bath. And uh, quite strikingly, what you see is that at the level uh, of the stochastic description, there is no uh, decoherence. Uh, so it's very different from uh, the picture I showed before where you just shrink towards the center of the box here. And for instance, uh, you can see that uh, if you compute the average with respect to the noise degrees of freedom of the trace of rho sj square, what you get is not zero, but uh, one third, for instance, because you just you can just see that geometrically because your arrow is uh, has the same probability of being anywhere on the sphere and its norm is always equal to one. Um, okay, so uh, something I just want to quickly mention uh, for those who, uh, who like this kind of stuff. So uh, the stationary distribution is uh, has also a nice description. So if I write the generating function uh, in the stationary state like this, uh, so A is just uh, um, a variable for my generating function. It is given by this integral where d eta of u is just the uh, uniform uh, uniformly uh, distributed, uh, uh, so the arm uh, measure of uh, the unitary group uh, of SU2, uh, meaning that the different momenta of uh, this problem uh, of the spin, for instance, plot the structure of the invariance of SU2. So if you like group theory, uh, uh, this is quite nice. And uh, this is, uh, you have an explicit expression of this thing, which is known as the Arish Chandra, it's X and Zuber uh, uh, expansion. So. If you're interested, we can discuss also. So now uh, just let me uh, quickly mention uh, some uh, applications to uh, many body system. Uh, so that was uh, fairly simple, but now uh, you can make the picture more complicated by going to extended system. And one of the uh, uh, model that you can look uh, that, uh, at that has attracted interest in the literature is the stochastic dephasing model. So it's just a, a but a spin chain, so favorite spin chain, the like x6 or xxz, uh, and then you put a random dephasing on each side. Uh, and uh, what you get uh, is uh, something that has diffusive transport. Uh, so uh, another model uh, that shows this diffusive transport, uh, which I got interested in, is the quantum extrusion processes, where here you have uh, stochastic jumps uh, between uh, neighboring sides. So as I said, you have diffuse transport. Uh, there is a rich structure of these models beyond the mean behavior. Uh, and those are can be thought as uh, prototypical model uh, and first steps towards a quantum formulation of the macroscopic fluctuation theory. So for those who want, don't know, uh, the macroscopic fluctuation theory is now believed to be uh, um, the general framework where we can extend uh, the uh, paradigma of uh, thermodynamic variables that is known for equilibrium thermodynamics to non-equilibrium process. So it is not known what a precise form it should take for the quantum, uh, uh, in the quantum case, and this can be toy model where you uh, make yourself an idea of what this theory should look like. Uh, so I just want to end some kind of, uh, with uh, some references if you're interested in what I uh, just said. Uh, so you can just, uh, uh, look at this slide. Uh, uh, so the for the quantum noise part, I think that um, most uh, uh, the picture emerged uh, first uh, in the seminal paper from Calder and Leggett uh, uh, in 1983. 
And then I think this uh, formu mathematical formulation was made precise really in this paper from Hudson and uh, Parthasarati, which identified the correct structure to uh, interpret the interaction uh, with the environment as a uh, quantum Ito stochastic process. Uh, for the dephasing model, um, so it was first shown for the mean evolution that uh, the dephasing uh, model showed diffusive transport by Marcos Nidarich in 2009. And then uh, work by uh, myself and collaborators uh, uh, show the structure uh, beyond the mean by going to the stochastic description. And for the quantum exclusion processes, uh, there are uh, ongoing works uh, among which I mentioned uh, this uh, free uh, paper. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, thank you for your attention and uh, welcome the question if uh, there are any. Thank you. Uh... <clears throat> Tony, uh, now uh, we have time for question. Uh, please unmute yourself and ask question if you have any. Uh, okay, Hi, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, this up, uh, uplifting to this uh, unitary thing can also be done for non Markovian, like you don't need the Markovian hypothesis for this, right? Yes, you, you need a, by construction, you need a Markovian hypothesis because your stochastic process uh, is Markovian. No, but what if we have a stochastic process with memory or something like that? Ah, yes, then, yeah, uh, so, so this goes beyond uh, what I showed in the talk, but uh, if you have a finite time uh, memory effects, then what you will get is a stochastic process with a memory kernel that is not delta distributed. So yes, you can also extend this picture in that case, but I don't know of any literature that does that. Okay. Because it's a much harder problem, of course. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the formulation uh, you seem to be presenting looks uh, pretty similar to the Cubo's uh, stochastic level uh, approach, right? Uh, to uh, which, sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, where, where, like you have, uh, 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 you evolve with respect to random Lewillians, uh, time, time random Lewillians, uh, and then you sort of average over the uh, noise realizations. So uh, this looks like uh, uh, very similar to. Uh, the approach what Kubo and Tanimura had developed in like uh, very uh, uh, 1970s and 80s. Uh, yeah, that does sound similar. I, uh, but actually, uh, I have to uh, admit I'm not uh, aware of uh, the, the reference. So uh, maybe that's something that you can. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, any any other question? Uh, can I have one more question? Yeah, yeah. Please uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, the uh, dynamics you are talking about. Uh, the uh, random uh, Hermitian dynamics. Uh, so it looks like it only uh, reproduces uh, uh, literally like uh, uh, T infinity uh, dynamics. So can can uh, is it possible to like sort of break it by introducing uh, evolution with respect to non-Hermitian matrices where the noise is not like complex conjugates of each others? Uh, actually, yeah, not sure what you mean by reproducing the infinite uh, uh, the time limit, but uh, actually the correspondence between the average stochastic evolution and the Libra evolution is true at all times. So maybe I didn't emphasize uh, this enough, but it's, it's always true. Uh, I meant uh, uh, temperature to be infinity. Ah, yes, yes, yes. The, the temperature is infinity. In that. You can interpret that as an infinite temperature bath uh, indeed. Uh, and the nice seems to be like uh, classical in the sense that uh, nice for the uh, uh, bra side and the ket side of your density matrix looks precisely same and they have same correlate correlations, right? Yes, uh, yes. The conjugate process has the same noise as it. Uh, so in that sense, uh, uh, it might not be possible to simulate uh, as such for the uh, 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 finite temperature cases, e even if it is Markovian, is it? Uh, yeah, so it's a good question. I don't know uh, exactly uh, what you should do to get the finite temperature. Uh, I know that there are some approaches that introduces a memory kernel uh, in the correlation of the noise to produce finite temperature behavior. But uh, I don't know if there is an approach that allows you to have uh, the Markovian property and finite temperature. This, yeah. uh, like, for example, uh, let's say we want to reproduce the Markov property. For the spin boson model you talked about, if you make the uh, the random sources in the uh, uh, 
Hamiltonian, uh, not same. Like they are not conjugates of each other. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you can sort of uh, reproduce the finite uh, 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 temperature state at asymptotically uh, metric. Uh, so essentially, you will have to leave the uh, random Hamiltonian to non-Hermitian uh, random Hamiltonian and uh, yes, do yes. the evolution. Yes, yes, yes. That, that is indeed true. Yeah, the, if you if you so, so this goes beyond what I discussed also, but if you don't assume that these DW are numbers, but are actually uh, more general objects like Grassmann uh, variables, you can get such kind of structures. Uh, that, is, that is true. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.